We play and call it work. Welcome back to Age of Sigmar Firestorm. Here is the current state of things. Obviously, as destruction, I am doing quite well, owning the Titan Works, Caverns of Falminax, and Plains of Blood. We have Chaos owning one at the Weird Flame Crest, Death owning the Valley of Fallen Gods, and Order owning the Infinity Gears. Unfortunately though for Kenny, he did not win his last game, which means the Infinity, or the Realm Gate, went to a random location, and it went to the Chains. Then, the matchups will be Matthew versus Kenny, so me versus Kenny, which is Destruction versus Order. And we decided to roll randomly for where we're gonna fight, just for fun. And we rolled the Chains. So the nice thing about this for Kenny is that since the Realm Gate is there, we both get to draw an extra card. And the nice thing for Kenny there is that because the Caverns of Falmanax has a Destruction garrison and is adjacent to the Chains and there's no river that blocks it, then I would have got to draw an extra card anyways, but this does not stack with the Realm Gate. So we both just got to draw an extra card. So that worked out nice for Kenny, that we both got to draw it. And we drew it, and we're gonna be doing 1800 points order versus 1700 points of destruction. Then the, we have the uh, Chaos Army against Death, which is Steve versus Luca. And they decided to fight in the eyes of the Prismaticon. Trying to go for one of those special locations get extra glory, and they're gonna be doing 2,000 points versus 1,100 points, 2,000 being chaos. As for our standings, I am in the lead with 12 glory. So Destruction has 12 glory, both Kenny and Luca, Death and Order have seven glory, and Steve, Chaos, only has one glory. So he's got a little bit of catching up to do. He's been upgrading his deck, which gives him better armies, but uh, Luca is able to get an extra two glory just by drawing one of his cards this turn which bumped him up nicely. So 12, seven, seven, and one. Don't forget that the game of Chaos versus Death will be in the Mini Wargaming Vault at the link below. If you're not a Vault member, you can still click it and get a free seven day trial after you watch this game. Without further ado, let us go into Destruction versus Order, Spider Fang Grotz versus Dispossessed at the Chains. The Chains, ancient Duradin chain forts litter this stretch of deep, narrow valleys arranged in perfect defensive order. Each is protected by a series of trenches and killing fields lined with lengths of razor spike chains. Should a general capture a fortified position in these lands, these chains can be manipulated to lash and bind their foes. Hey everybody, Matthew and Kenny here, ready for our next game of Firestorm. It's going to be Spider Fang Grotz versus Dispossessed. And we're playing in the chains, as you already saw. And the interesting thing about the chains is that there's a special rule that if your general's within an inch of a dread hold, then you can use a command ability to choose a unit within 12 inches, enemy unit, and do D3 mortal wounds to them. But if you're Duradin, then you're particularly good at it, so you get to choose D3 units and do D3 mortal wounds to them. So that's the special rule that comes with this particular table. And have their movement a, or charge. Oh, I think it has their run and charge too. Yeah, which will be very important because I'm going to be skitter, skitter, skittering. Yep. A note of interest for the rules, they're all the, the spider fang grots have a rule called wall crawler. And this just says that when moving you can ignore terrain. And we had the question of whether that meant that you could ignore vertical distance as well. And nothing was in the FAQ that we could see, and so we just decided to rule it that they can ignore vertical terrain. So Kenny's okay with that. And you'll see with the table that we have set up that without that, it would, it would make it a little harder to get everything in there. But tis the way it is. If you would disagree with that, I'd love to hear why. More than just like, I don't think that's it. Like give me some page numbers or some discussion that was had somewhere in Warhammer community or something. Something official so that we can know whether that is the correct rule or not. Because I, 
do want to play spider finger outs more often. Yeah, educate us. Educate us, please, because in our, in our short amount of research, we weren't able to find it. <laughs> yeah. Which is rule book and FAQ and designer's commentary. Mm -hmm. And of course, after you finish watching this game, make sure you go and check out the game between Steve and Luca, which Steve has 2,000 points of Beasts of Chaos versus Luca's 1,100 points of Death. Now you might think, Psh, well, that's going to be dumb. But Steve is terrified at the moment because Luca's bringing lots of skeletons, which apparently are so broken that he believes at 2,000 points he still doesn't stand a chance. What do you think? I think it's going to be a very close game. Yeah. <laughs> and so we'll have to see. We're, they're playing it right now, so I don't even know the results of that. So you can check that out at the link below. So let's take a look at our armies and the scenario. This is my 1,700 points of uh, Spider Fang Grotz. It's going to be led by a big boss on his big gigantic spider. And there's another big boss and gigantic spider as well. My general will have the Ravager command ability, which uh, normally destruction. You roll a die for each hero, and on a six, uh, a unit wholly within 12 inches of them can move or charge or whatever. For the general, it's plus two to that, so you get a four plus, but for him it'll be a three plus. And I, I gave him the, ra the, the Harrowing Blade, I think it's called. Then instead of using his melee attack, he can roll a die for every model within three inches, and on a five plus, that unit takes mortal wounds, which is pretty awesome. And for my three battle line, we've got a unit of 30 spider riders and two units of 10. And then we've also got uh, two of these big bad boys, Arachnarok spiders. In this case, this one is an old model that has a catapult. We're just going to treat both of them as having shamans and all the spiders, or the, all the grots on the back. Because it really makes no sense to do anything but that. And that is my 1700 points of spider fang. And Kenny has 1800 points of dispossessed. Let's take a closer look at what he brought. So here we have uh, my first battle line. It's just ten long beards with great weapons. Uh, then we have my uh, organ gun. That's what it's called. <laughs> uh, squad of twenty iron drakes. One with the torpedo gun. That's a uh, cannon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is a big blob of forty warriors extending oh, out oh, to the all front the way down there. Top. <laughs> Good thing they increased the coherency for vertical distance, right? Otherwise, yeah. that would have been impossible. Uh, then we have my hammers and Torviel Gunnarsson. Now, you put them back here because he has a special weapon, the relic, that will let you remove them and put them somewhere else on the table. Yeah. Because otherwise, this would kind of trap them back there for the whole game. Yes, four inch movement. And lastly? Uh, cannon. And that's it, right? There's nothing else uh, there's hiding? There's a rune warden right here. There he is. Who's your general? Torbjald Gunnarsson. And what's your grudge? Uh, my grudge is. Oh, gee, what was it called? What is it? Stuck up. Your what? heroes are stuck up. I get to reroll ones to hit with my dispossessed against your heroes. All your dispossessed. Yeah. Does your general have to be alive? Is no. there any? It's just it's for the just, whole game. You get to reroll ones to hit. They, Shooting or close combat doesn't matter. They've hated you. Oh wow. Since the dawn of time, apparently. That's actually powerful because my big spiders and my two grout well, big bosses are the are artillery heroes. is not dispossessed. Oh, they're not. They're iron weld. Yeah. Oh, okay. So the art, the artillery doesn't get that, including this one. Yeah. So all the artillery are your allies. Yes. As iron weld. I just weld. took a dwarven. What crew? Dwarven crew. Of course. Because it looks great. Yeah, of course it does. <laughs> we decided to randomly roll one of the 18 pitched battle battle plans from either the core book or the general's handbook. We ended up getting Star Strike, which is that you deploy, like you see, the whole 12 inches on each side. Your territory is up to the halfway point, but you still have to stay 12 inches away from the enemy territory. And at the start of the second battle round, we're going to randomly drop an objective what, there's basically three spots along the middle line, and you roll a die, one, it's basically a d3, one, two, three. And, and the sort of the third battle round, we do the same thing, but in each side, so 12 inches up on each side. If you control a, um, an objective marker at the end of your turn, you get a number of victory points equal to the current battle round. So it increases their value as the game goes on. And other than that, just remember that we have the chains rule, we both, oh, right, stratagems. In Firestorm, you have strategy points that you can use to buy stratagems before the game starts. You decided to buy, you only had two stratagems, or strategy points, and I had five. You were terrified that I was going to get reinforcements, so you bought foil for one point to foil reinforcements. Yep. I spent four points and did not buy reinforcements, but instead bought uh, forward deployment, which allows me to, before the battle begins, move D3 of my units as if it were the movement phase, but no running. But because I'm just using the general destruction, I can also add on the allegiance ability in the Firestorm book, which allows me to roll twice on the stratagems and pick one of those as I have two talking heads giving me advice. So let's go check to see what that's going to be. 
So that's based on this one, Stoneclaw's Gut Stompas. And see, Spider Fang is allowed to be brought for this. And so just so you understand how this works, if you bring a general or a Grand Alliance Legion army, then you're allowed to add on the, the one from Firestorm. Like for example, if you're from Hammerhall and you bring all order with no Seraphim, then you could use the order ability plus the Pride of Hammerhall. So basically mine is that I get insane advice from a couple talking heads. So I get to roll twice and pick one. So the orange will be tens. So 36 is hatred. And then we got 46, which is Night Attack. Oh, Night Attack allows me for the first round to reduce the range of weapons, but I don't know if that'll matter because I think I'm gonna be pretty close. Let's take a look. I am gonna choose Night Attack, which reduces the limit of all attacks to 12 inches for the first battle round only. So I'm coming at night. That's kind of a cool thematic thing. And I actually finished deploying first. We did that off camera. And so I get to choose who goes first and I'm gonna choose for you to go first, obviously. But after I move D3 of my units. All good? Uh, is your brick of 30 guys getting the... Oh, right. I also have the Caverns of Fallman X, which allows me to give a unit plus one of their wound rolls. Yes, my brick of 30 will have plus one of their wound rolls. Great. Isn't that awesome? Does that make you happy? It's great. I love it. It's great. It's awesome. I'm going to move D3 of my units. D3 units get to move, as if it were the movement phase, but no running. Come on, one. Two. No, I'm happy with two. That's one plus one. So I'm going to move my general as well as this blob of 30. And they can just move their 8 inches, they don't get to run. And up they go, getting ready to battle. Hero phase! So my rune lord is going to... Bring... Rune lord, not a rune warden. Yeah. I got warden king and rune lord and just... Slap them together, I guess. What's his prayer going to be? I uh, I choose after I roll the d6, but it's always minus or one additional rend on my weapons for okay. one squad. How many do you have to roll? A two up. Good start. And it'll be on the iron. How long race. does it last for? Till my next hero phase. Okay. So. Oh, it doesn't matter because you're not going to be shooting. No, uh, but if you charge me and then it's my turn afterwards, I'm going to shoot you. But then it's your hero phase, so you got to pray again, anyways. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> rend. So it does do something because if I charge them, their their close combat weapons have minus one rend. Yeah. So that is something, I guess. But it's like fours and fives. That's so. fine. It's something. <laughs> it's something. And yeah. So you're gonna shield wall? I'm gonna shield wall with my warriors. That's a hero phase thing. It doesn't specify when you do it, but you can't advance or charge after you do it. So it must be before they move. It must be before they move. So. And what does it give them? Reroll of their failed saving throws or something? Yeah, you do it instead of running or charging, so you would do it in the movement phase. But still, you can declare right now. And uh, they reroll all failed saving throws. The, the long beards are going to grumble about how grots are weedier these days. And yeah, what does that give them? Uh, everything wholly within, or no, within eight inches rerolls once to wound in the combat phase. Nice. Movement phase. So at the start of the movement phase, uh, Torbjald, while out of sight, is going to take his hammers and use the. Dwarven pick, doing what dwarves do best and digging. They're digging. So basically, they get removed, and then at the end of your next movement phase, where do they get placed? Uh, they deep strike, so outside anywhere, of nine inches. Anywhere more than nine inches from enemies. Yeah. Got it. And now they're digging frantically underground, and there's no trace of a hole from where they just went, yeah, where 41 guys just went down. And what else for your movement? Uh, the cannon and the crew are just going to move like two inches. So basically I told him before that we'll just ignore these walls for line of sight purposes so the cannons that are butted up right against it basically can shoot down. Like there's still gonna be an angle to it of course but if otherwise the cannons won't be able to shoot from off the walls. And uh, these long beards are just gonna go their little four inch movement. Not gonna run. No they uh, They're gonna keep their distance. This army's not about running. Okay. And now we're just counting the dread hold as being three inches up, because it's three inches to the floor. And we're just ignoring that overhanging wall, which means that without running in a four inch move, one of the front ranks of the Duard and the Dispossessed can drop down, because they go out an inch, drop down three inches. So it'll allow him to start to create more of a defensive wall. Get another squad down too. Get those guys down from up there. It's a huge 40 dwarf squad. Yeah, they're going far. Yeah. Now, you don't have any range for your shooting because it's night attack, so only 12 inch range. You don't have any charging, and that's your turn. Nothing oh, else is moving, right? Turn. Okay, stay in your defensive positions.
Being in my hero phase, I can get some free moves. I'm actually, just so you know, I'm not going to be going full tilt here and charging in. Or maybe I will. <laughs> I'm not sure. Because I almost want to hold back just outside of the range of those gunners. Weather a round of shooting from your cannons and get more guys in a position and see where the comets drop and be able to grab more objectives. But it's, it's, it's tempting to charge in though because I'll be able to get to those guys pretty easily and possibly even get a full front right here. But when I get there, I'm going to take a, uh, a rather large fall here. And these guys look scary, but they are six up saves with two wounds each with a bravery of four. So they are going to fall very quickly. And I, want, I only have one command point, which I want to use on his command ability, which gives them normally the spiders, if they roll a six to hit, they um, cause a mortal wound rather than rolling for their damage. But he has an ability that everything within eight inches do that on a five or six. And then I could throw a spell on them that lets them do two mortal wounds whenever that happens. So I can decimate something pretty bad. But then I won't have a command point for Inspiring Presence. And I have a funny feeling that you'll be able to do enough damage to these guys that the rest of them will just run without any, any difficulty there. Whereas if I hold back for a turn, whether one turn of shooting, then I'll have two command points next turn, know where the objectives are, but I'll have to weather a turn of shooting. That's the only thing that's making me wonder. I'm not quite sure what to do, to be honest. I think they're just gonna kind of skitter up and get into position, and I'll do my initial plan. Either way, though, I get a free move for something. I'll roll it anyways on a three plus for my general. He got it, so a unit wholly within 12 inches, which these guys actually are, I'd already measured it, could make a free move or charge if they're within 12 inches. Um, I'm not even going to use it, though, so I don't even know why I rolled it. I'll, I'll roll it for the, the big guy. Six for him, and six for the other big guy. No, and then six for this guy, because I could, I could use them moving up a bit. I'm not going to cast any spells. Although, what if you come out and manage to charge me? No, you're not going to be able to charge me. I could for, you know what, I'll, I'll do it anyways. I, for casting value of four, it'll let them double the mortal wounds they do in close combat. And your rune lord is not close enough to stop me. You're not within 30 inches. I make it. And see, Mystic Shield, you're going to most likely, anything shooting at them will have a rend. Because you got that two plus prayer to give them a minus one rend. They only have a six up save. I might as well try to throw it on them with the other shaman. I get it. So they've got Mystic Shield and the double mortal wounds thing. And then in my movement phase, I'll roll a run for these guys just so I have whatever movement I want. So nine inches of movement for them. So they rearranged, I kind of shifted my front to the left. And then I'm gonna run the big boss, six inches. Really just, there's a spot for him. So he ignores that terrain right here that keeps him within 12 inches of everybody. This gigantic spider will run two inches. He's gonna drop down right to here. Other one on this side will run about four inches. So 12 inches ignoring the vertical. So he's just going to climb down to here. This 10-man squad will run four. Their job is really just to kind of hold the back line and grab objectives later on. So we'll just bring him up. And this big boss, he's going to run up one. We're just going to pitter-patter. Let's get at it right there and then run the spiders behind him five inches. This will allow him to reposition over to here. Nothing too crazy here, just kind of moving up my swarm of spiders, which look way more terrifying than they actually are. They are terrifying, they hit hard. But two wounds with a six up save each, with only a bravery of four, you're gonna see how fast they fall. Could have actually added plus two to all their run rolls because each of the squads has a drummer, but it, I didn't need it. I was just trying to kind of stay within a certain area anyways. That is the end of the first battle round. Score is zero, zero obviously, but we get to see, before we roll to see who gets the next turn, or choose who gets the first turn, we roll to see where the first meteor or star drops, or first objective. So basically the way it works is there's a line along the middle, and then there's three points, 12 inches in, 24 inches in, and 12 inches in from that side. So it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six. Where do you want it? Uh, middle? Right in the center where I can put 40 warriors. No, it'll be on that side. Of course. Sorry, I misspoke. It's not 12 inches from the side, it's equal. This was 18, 36, and then 18 from that side. So this one will be worth whoever controls it at the end of their, well not right now, this is the start of the second battle round, gets a number of victory points equal to the current battle round. So right now it's worth two. As we roll to see who gets first turn in the second battle round. Now you win ties. Three, six. Who's going first? Uh, that will be me. Okay.
Hero phrase. Hero phrase. Hero phase. Prayer. Let's Two plus you're giving plus one rend to somebody? Yeah, to the Iron Drakes. Now they're not in range to fire, you know that, right? I can move. I have a four inch move. That's that's true, and you're also on a cliff. But you know. I can get some in. Okay. Plus I have a twenty inch range torpedo. You do. Now we're just gonna assume these guys are always grumbling about grots. Especially yeah. Especially because they're facing grots. grots. Yeah. So they always get the everybody within eight inches of them that's dispossessed gets plus one to their wound rolls. Rerolls ones to wound. Rerolls ones to wound. That's that's better. I'm glad that that's the case. Yeah. Movement phase, are your warriors going to lock shields? They are going to shield wall. Shield wall, so they cannot advance or charge, correct? Nope. That's or yes, you are correct. No, uh, yes, can't. I'm correct, but no, they cannot. <laughs> so both, I guess, answers would work. So they can move up four inches. That'll allow you to get, just be careful, because only one more rank is going to be able to drop down. Yep. So keep them in coherency. Forming a better wall, so they have better frontage, which Making works both for and against them. Making a little room for gentlemen on a cliff. And then the front rank drop down, and everybody moves up. And then you're going to move your, uh, what are these guys called? Iron Drakes. Iron Drakes. Try to get them a little closer. Yeah. Your torpedo at least will be in range. Everybody else is going to have a hard time. Yeah. And at the end of your second, at the end of your movement phase, all of a sudden the ground rumbles. And nine. And boom, like a bunch of gophers. They pop on up. 9.1 inches away. Or 9.01 inches away from the nearest model. So Torpedoer is the only one that's in range of anything. He's within range of my big old monster spider, or your Ragnarok, which apparently you do more damage against the torpedo launcher, right? Yes, I do. And that lookout sir doesn't work because I'm a behemoth. So the torpedo has one shot, but if you have at least ten models in that unit that are not within, and you're not within three inches of enemies, you get to add one to the number of attacks. You have two shots. Hitting on threes, rerolling ones because your grudge is against monsters, or against heroes, sorry. Yeah. Threes to wound. Oh, hey, these are going to be minus three rend because of the prayer, which ignores my four-up armor. I don't have cover, so you're going to do 2d6 damage. Six. That's yeah. not bad. Nah, not bad. A little low, but uh, considering that you got both your hits, both your wounds. Yeah, I'll take my six wounds. So I go down to eight out of 14 wounds. Organ gun, what's the target? Uh, I'm going to shoot this squad of grots. The spider fan grots of the yeah, spider riders? The 30 The brick. huge one. Yeah. So with this gun, you get to choose how many barrels you're going to crank, yep. and then you have to roll a number on a die equal to or greater than that, otherwise you don't fire at all. Yes. And how, what's the maximum that you can crank? You can crank all four. Or you can only do one and automatically pass it? And automatically pass it. So you, how many are you going to do? I'm going to do three. So if you don't roll three or higher right now, you don't even get to fire? Yeah. Okay. Do it. Oh! Yeah. And that's not a hit roll, so it doesn't get to re-roll ones or anything. Nope. <laughs> Has that happened every game? Every single one, but that's fine. It's uh, my fault for being greedy with it. Okay. What about your cannon? It's in range. Uh, the cannon's going to shoot the same squad. Two shots because you have three crew hitting on fours. They don't get to reroll ones, though, because nope. they're not dispossessed. Uh, so that's one hit. I'm going to use my stratagem point. Your one strategy point. Granted from Firestorm. Right, this is specifically from <laughs> Firestorm. This is not a command point or anything. This is spe specific to this campaign. Yes. It lets you reroll a hit, wound, saving throw, or casting or unbinding. That's I'll it. die in the casting or unbinding. Okay, all the dice in the cast room. <laughs> yeah. So re-rolling, and this is your only one re-roll. Yeah, I got one. And you bailed it. Two's to wound, though. Okay. Well, uh, it, it has a rend, right? Yeah. I was six up save. How much damage does it do? Six. Ouch! That's three dead guys. So I'll take them from back here. One, two, three. Any of the other cannons going to fire at the same target? Yes, it is. Four is to hit. You're all out of re-rolls. Oh, they both hit! And it's just twos to wound. Let me see a one. No! D6 damage each. Double one. Uh, D6. Why are you rolling one at a time? One? Uh, because oh, I, I can reroll the damage rolls if you have ten or more models in the unit. Right. Uh, I, don't so know why, I don't know why I was rolling them one at a time. I'm like, that doesn't matter. Yeah. And you get a nine. nine. So four and a half more die. Okay. So four and a half more die. One, two, three, um, four and a half. So that's seven dead so far. That's all you're shooting though, right? Yes. Okay. But you do have a charge. I do have a charge. So nine inch charge, and you do have a general actually nearby, and you do have a couple command points to help you with this reroll. So yeah. your intent is to reroll if you fail it, right? Yes. You don't have to do it if you decide not to, but I'm just saying that that's what I've, you're thinking of. Yeah, I almost definitely will. So you need a nine inch charge. Go. Failed. Reroll. I'll reroll. Using a command point. Oh, they yes. make it. 10-inch charge, in they go. Well, I'm in trouble. Okay. 
In they go. Yeah. Into the combat phase. Obviously, you're going to fight first, piling in three inches. You have to fight in two ranks, because they have one-inch bases and they have a one-inch reach. And they're definitely going to get that objective. And lots of guys get to strike. you got 39 attacks hitting on threes. They hit on threes. Rerolling ones, because I'm a hero. Well, there's a bunch of twos, at least. Reroll those ones. Oh, good. <laughs> Thank you. And then wounded on threes, minus one rend, one damage. Oh, you could kill me here. Ah! Don't have anything to help you with these. Nope. Okay. 18 wounds. I gotta make a lot of five ups here. You killed him. You killed him. I somehow I only rolled three five ups when I should have rolled like six or seven. He only has 14 wounds and you just dealt uh, 15. No, it wasn't the grudge. You didn't get any of those rerolls. Ah, uh, that's. Okay. I wanna believe it's the grudge. Well, you brought my guys into combat, so at least I get to fight back a little bit. Yep. But, oh boy, does that spread out my unit and they won't be able to charge anything. So the worst part of all this, well, the Arachnorok dying is pretty bad, is that this guy, these guys are engaged, and um, I don't want to be. So I'm still, I'll pile in with a couple of them. You don't care, you automatically pass morale test when you're within 16 inches of him. Yeah. Because of your, you're just awesome that way. So I'll just pile in like this. And then what I'll do is in, in the battle shock phase, I'll make, make sure a few of them run, because I'm sure a few of them will run, and I'll just pull them off of there. So start with the spiders. They're hitting on fours, but sixes will do two mortal wounds each because they're still buffed. Well, I got two hits at least. They get plus one to wound because the cavern's a fallen axe thing, so they wound on threes. That's one wound. No rend, one damage. Four up save. Oh, I killed one. Oh well. The riders will have one attack each. Looking for fives to hit. Oh, look at that. There's the sixes. That would have been four mortal wounds. Yeah, four would. dead guys. Threes to wound because of the plus one to wound. Nothing. Well, that's it. So battle shock. So battle shock. I've lost seven of these guys. They're counting as bravery six right now because um, they don't get to use their banner because they're within three inches. But they do have twenty plus models, so they get the plus two in the battle shock phase. So I'm going to lose d6 plus one more unless I inspire and presence them. But if I inspire and presence them, then this whole unit is useless because I'll have a handful of them locked up against them and they won't be able to do any charges. So we're just going to lose d6 plus one more. Okay, three. I can do that. Uh, yeah, actually the plus one is what saves me there. So one, two, and just to be sure, I don't care about running faster. Three. Well, that's, uh, you got two points for that. And uh, so the score is two nothing. You killed an Arachnorok, you hurt the other Arachnorok, and you killed ten of my spider fang, or spider riders, just like that. That's a good chunk of my army, and it's only cost you one guy so far? Yeah. That's all you've lost so far. Well, I got my turn now. Let's see if I can do some damage. My hero phase. Oh, goodness. First things first, I'm going to cast the, the spell on them that lets them uh, activate their poison, their mortal wounds thing on a 5 plus rather than a 6 plus. I am within 30 inches of your guy, and you'll get a plus 2 to, to unbind this, so hopefully I roll high. I need a 4. Okay, an 11. So you're going to have to roll a 10 naturally on those dice to stop it. No. Okay, so they're now going to the spiders themselves when they attack. Instead of mortal wounding on a 6 plus, they mortal wound on a 5 plus. I'm going to use my command point that I just got right now on my general. He's going to use his command ability, which lets pretty much any unit within 8 inches to... Um, wait, I'm getting this backwards. That spell doubles their mortal wounds. His ability is everybody within 8 inches now does their mortal wounds on a 5+. plus. Now we're going to roll to see if he gets to make a unit move. 3+. plus. Hmm, okay. He'll do it on a six. Why did I roll a one, man? And then the other guy will do it on a six. Oh, yeah, he does it, but they're not wholly within 12 inches of him. What the heck? He's going to take a six-inch move. You know what? No, he's going this way. Like that. Oh, sorry. Don't mean to move a guy. I really needed him to make his three plus, though, so these guys could move eight inches, and then they're going to move eight inches again and charge into these. I think I'm going to abandon this side and try to make up for a huge loss that I just had right there. My movement phase. These guys are going to start wall climbing. You know what, I'm just going to have to have him go straight up here. Thankfully, there's a better coherency now. So they all climbed up here. I'm going to be abusing their wall climbing right now. And then these spiders will head this way. 
So they all move closer. They would have been like all the way up to here by now. Getting a really good surround on those bumpkins. My spider will move again because he moved in the hero phase. Now he's moving the moon phase. And then these ones will run. They get an extra plus two to this. So yeah, we're moving like 16 inches. We're just going to reshuffle like so. Sorry, moving 15 inches, not 16. I can do math. And then the big boss will run two, four, just to kind of center him again right here. For now, being a little defensive, because I don't know where the other objectives are going to drop. All the uh, bowmen in here are going to fire over at the whatever these guys are out front. Warriors. Warriors. Are you ready for a walloping? Yeah, let's do it. Four shots hit on fives. Okay, I'm done. Now we're going to go to the charge phase. I'm going to start with my big boss. He's going to declare a charge, and he's going to roll a ten. He is going to charge up to here, like so. Big unit will charge. Eleven inches, thank you. All right, I needed that. So this guy can actually go eleven inches and make it in there, so we're going to do it like this. I think the best option will be to start to wrap around this way, and then just come on in. Get on ready for this. And then the rest of these will just, hey, let go. And do the best they can. Here they come. Charge this unit, eight inches. That'll get me all the way up to here. Good old wall climber. In they go. In the combat phase, I'm gonna have my big squad go first, because they seem to have the most potential. This guy, the piling is not going to really get much more in. It might allow me to get like one extra guy because he'll pile in like this, get closest to that, and the next one will pile in. So it'll, it'll allow me to get a little bit more in, but not much. And then we're just putting every attack on them that we can. We'll start with the spiders, the ones that can actually do lots of damage. 16 attacks from those spiders! This is probably the most important roll that I make in this entire game right now because uh, I could just destroy this unit pretty badly right here. They hit on fours, but if they roll five or higher, then they do two mortal wounds because they're buffed by the magic of the Arachnorok shaman spider person. Here we go. Okay, all right, we got a bunch of mortal wounds already. We've got uh, six five pluses, so that is 12 mortal wounds right there. And the other four will wound on threes because of my plus one. So that's three wounds to which you get four up saves, and two more. So 14 are dead so far, and then we'll do the spears. Fives to hit, no special mortal wounds, but still a lot of hits. Oh, there was a four in there. Threes to wound because of the Caverns of Fulminax, so two wounds. Four up saves. All right, those are good. So 14 die in total from that. Wow, but since they're gonna have their buddy boy back there, they're not gonna have to make a Battleshock test, is that right? That's correct, they're the King's Guard. Ugh. Still lots of your guys left, so I don't think I'm going to be able to grab that objective from you. And you get to swing back first before I get any more attacks. I'm going to pile in first. Looks like he's closer that way. Get a little... Okay. So you're going to put as many as you can on my big boss? Yes. So it'll be eight, three on that group, and then um, looks like it'll be three on this group. Against my big boss first, threes to hit, rerolling ones. You could just... you could mur Actually, you're likely to murder him right here. Because yeah, threes and threes minus one one damage. Ugh. Threes to wound. Okay, well, you did six wounds, which is how many wounds I have. Minus one ren, so I get a five up save. As long as I make one of them, I'm alive. Okay, I made three of them, so I'm better than alive. Well, I mean, not better than alive. And then it'll do your three guys against the big group. And a three against my big group of spiders. Hitting on threes. No rerolling ones here, because they're not heroes. They ain't no heroes. And threes to wound. They won't get a save against that, so two more. That's two wounds. That's one more dies. So kill the one that's wounded. And I'll just throw a wound on this one. And then the three against this group of ten. Threes to hit. No rerolling ones here, because you don't have a grudge against these guys. No. Threes to wound. Oh, one wound. That doesn't kill anybody. I'll put it on. Not the banner. Uh, so it's my turn now. That's all you got to do. So my big boss, instead of doing his attacks, he will do his special relic attack, which is he rolls a die for every model within three inches, and on a five plus, they take a mortal wound. Eleven of your guys are within three inches. Each five plus is a mortal wound. 
three. So three die so far, and then the spider gets to attack. Spider has four attacks and on fours, but once again, fives or sixes will do one mortal wound. Oh, three hits, but no mortal wounds. Threes to wound, minus one rend, two wounds. So five up saves instead. So one more of your choice dies. And now my ten spider squad. Now you pull away from them to keep them out of combat, but it also allows me to draw more guys in to where the objective is. So I'm going to make sure I'm moving the right guys, yeah. It'll be him, then him, and then these back here, not that guy. So three spiders are in range, and then we have an extra spear in range as well. Three spiders, they'll activate their mortal wounds on a five plus, but it's only one mortal wound each, because they're not buffed by the spell. So two mortal wounds plus a hit, that wounds on a four, and it does. And there's no rand, so four up save. So two guys die from that. And then four spears, fives and fours, one hit, no wound. So yeah, that was underwhelming. I think you're still holding that objective, but we'll have to double check. So let's do Battle Shock. Loss is here. Now, they are within 16 inches of him, and they have a rule that with their own 16 inches of him, they don't take Battle Shock tests. Yep. Uh, that's awesome. I love killing like 20 guys and having the rest be like, eh, whatever. Although I guess you I could spend a command point to inspire your presence then, but at least it would cost you a command point. I lost one spider over here, and their bravery is effectively, I still think there's 20 of them. Let me double check. Oh, there's 19 of them, so their bravery five now. They lost one guy. Okay, so they're fine. And now, who has the most guys within six inches of the center of the objective? Obviously, all your, your guys are. You have nine within six, and I have definitely more than nine. So that is two victory points for me, tying it up to two to two as we go into round three and drop the rest of the objectives. So beginning of the third battle round, let's see where they go. I'll roll for mine. Kenny will roll for his. So for me, it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six. Hoping for a three, four. Well, five, six is okay. Now, before you roll, we got to determine yours, so it'll be the opposite. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm hoping for a one or a two. Well, it's a uh, three. Three. Oh, it's going to be in the middle. I don't like that. So my objective dropped right here, which I'm happy about. And your object, your objective dropped right there, which I'm not happy about. I would rather it have been right there. But so, yeah, you're going to keep getting points for that one. We're going to be really fighting over this one, and I'll keep getting points for, over this one. So it's going to be an interesting game if you don't just wipe me out. Let's see who gets to go first in turn three, battle round three. I want to win this roll off. But you win ties. Yeah, I got a five. I win. I'm going. Woohoo! Double turn, Spider Fangrass. Now, in my turn, because you can only move six inches, even if I get a free move, I won't get close enough to these guys to turn on the double mortal wounding thing again. But let's see if I roll a six for him. I don't. What about him? Because he's within 12 inches of him. No, I don't. Uh, and then my general could roll three plus. Yes, he did. So I'm going to choose this big unit, and it allows them to pile in three inches right now. Not fight, but pile in. All right, they've all piled in. I'm up to two command points now. I'm going to use his command ability to let everybody do mortal wounds on fives instead of fours. I'll throw Mystic Shield on himself. I make it. If you roll a five or higher, you didn't stop it because you got plus two to that. Mm -hmm. He's got Mystic Shield. Watch out. Moon phase is going to run. So nine inches total because it only moves six when it's hurt. I'm going to get as close as we can over here. These spider riders are just going to claim this objective because that's why I brought them. I would have split them all up into uh, groups of five if I didn't think that would be too cheesy. My other big boss will just kind of come up to here. Make sure he's near, nearby to help everything. We're just kind of abandoning that objective. That's yours. You can have it. Straight to uh, fighting. We're not going to charge anywhere. So we'll just go. And we'll start with this big old unit of uh, 19 spider riders, I think. Yeah, I'll start with them. We've got eight spiders in range. Looking at four is to hit, but each five plus will do a mortal wound thanks to my uh, my command ability. Oh, that was pathetic. Horribly, horribly pathetic. One mortal wound. The rest of these went on threes because my cavern's a Falminax thing, so three wounds, no rend. Oh, this guy, it's fine. It, sorry, the camera hadn't turned on yet, but he rolled this, so one more die. So two die from that. Yep, that's what I kind of expected. Look so impressive and then die. Ten spears are in range, though. Watch out. Fives to hit. Of course, they roll all the fives, just like last time they rolled all the sixes. And threes to wound, because the caverns of Falmanax giving them plus one to wound. Three more wounds. 
Warp save. So one more dies from that, and that is their fight. So last time they killed like 14 guys, this time they killed two, three, two, two. Two, I think. Now they get to fight back. Who do they want to attack? Uh, the guy with the... The big yeah, boss. Warlord, maybe. Yeah, of course. They should be able to kill him. Threes to hit rerolling ones. Oh, goodness, Kenny. Oh, no. Kenny! That's not... Oh, that's not how statistics works, Kenny! His time is now. Yeah. Yeah, his time is done. Threes to wound, no rerolls. Yeah, he's... he's Well, I, I guess he can survive. I got five up saves, and I got three wounds left, so I have to make five five up saves. You ready? Yeah. Ready? No! He's dead. So that aura drops, too, because it's within eight inches of him, and he's no longer within anybody's eight inches. Ugh, and he was going to hit you pretty hard, too. So now we have this unit that'll go. We'll just pile in. I'm going to pile in, yeah, like this, and then have him go. I'm going to turn them around to differentiate them from the other unit. So if they're looking at you with their butts out, it's because they're from the other unit. It's just a new grot dance craze. Yep, something like that. Something like this. Three spider butts attacking you, hitting on fours. Sixes will do mortal wounds. Okay, well, that's one less mortal wound than it would have, but that's still two. Hold on, don't remove them yet, don't remove them yet. I'm just gonna knock them down. Okay, fours to wound, they don't have the Caverns of Fulminax thing. They're gonna do more damage than that huge unit. Four up saves. So three die in total from that. So you have two plus the one. Five spears in range, fives to hit, fours to wound. They're not buffed. Four up save. Okay, you're good. Still, there's only three of them left. Should have killed more. And that's the end of the combat phase. And there's no battle shock because you're within 16 inch, so you automatically pass. Because reasons. And you didn't kill any of my spider riders because you were too busy walloping away on my boss. Which is why I have my other boss here so he can cast the same ability mm. when the time comes. End of my third turn, I control two objectives. They're three points apiece, six points. That brings me up to eight points. So eight to two. If I can get far enough ahead in points, and no matter what he does to all my poor spiders, I should be able to still win. You want to use his ridiculously awesome command ability? Yes, I do. So he chooses a unit within 16 inches, big unit of spiders, and every dispossessed on the table gets plus one to wound them. Dispossessed, though. Yeah. Not all your big cannons and stuff. That would be. And then a prayer, two plus. Two plus. Who are you going to give the plus one run to? These guys. Yeah, because if they can get into that fight, they'll be able to murder them. And they continue grumbling. So they're not going to do their shield locking shield wall thing? Uh, no. Because they actually want to be able to charge? It's go time. <laughs> they're all dropping down, getting ready to charge. <laughs> It'll be a bit of a stringy charge, because the guys up top are going to have a harder time oh, getting they're going to do their best. And then I'm just going to move the iron drakes up. I'll be careful. They decide to grumble and tell stories of times that were way better in the past about how grots used to be weedier, and men used to be men, and dwarves were dwarves, and elves were elves. Not in these weird high fantasy times where elves are elves, and dwarves are Durden, and humans are who knows what. <laughs> I remember when we used to stand perfectly rank and file. None of this circular nonsense. Shooting phase. Organ gun is gonna fire at the big unit just barely in range. So he wants to start with that before he starts taking casualties away. How many barrels would you like to crank? Three. Three? You gotta roll three plus. Oh, you do it again! It's cursed! It's cursed! Cursed organ gun! And then you got two cannons. You want to just fire them both at the same time into those spiders? Yeah. Save time. Four shots sitting on fours. Oh, three of them hit. This That's... is going to hurt so bad. Two's to wound. Oh, they all hit! That's 3d6 damage, and you can re-roll it, right? Yeah. Why do you get to re-roll it? Because I have uh, all three... Or you have ten or more models. Okay, you want to re-roll that three? Yes. Huh. Hey, look at that. Look at that. 15 wounds. Yup. Ow. Well, that'll kill seven and a half of them. And there happens to be a half right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And there'll be an eighth. So you back here, I guess. So we're going to do the one Iron Drake in range and the one Torpedo in range into the Arachnorok. Regular horrible shots? Yep. What threes. Of course, threes. And threes. So one with Surrend. One. So, five up safe. Did not make it. What damage? One. Okay, I'm down to seven. Then you get to fire the torpedo. Yes. Threes. Three rolling ones. Threes. Rend. Two. Six up save. Hey! And this does d6 damage, so it I won't d6 die. Soul monster. Oh, I got one wound left. Oh. If you had just put the extra rend on them instead, you would have killed them. Just saying. 
Need a 10 inch charge to get to them now. You do have a hero sitting close to them though. <laughs> so you could use your last command point. So 10s. That's a double one. Do you want to use your last command point? I will use my last command point on that. Okay. No. Oh, so close. Anything but a double one for him. You don't have anything to help you reroll this. Oh, okay. I saw that one first. Uh. Remember, the ones facing this way are the smaller, which is all you can charge. Yeah. Start with a big old king himself. He's got four attacks. Threes to hit. No rerolls. Because they ain't heroes. Threes to wound. No saves, because minus one. Two of them get through, and they're D3 damage apiece. So you could kill three of them. Mm, so you do three damage. And you kill one and a half of them. We'll start all the way over here now, because you're all the way over there. My turn! Whoops, pulled from the wrong unit. So you killed one and a half. So that half is actually right here. And then one. Uh, drummer, see ya. Now banner. I'm always going to have enemies within three inches. <laughs> Let's just face it. We'll do the, I think the big unit has more guys close. Yeah. So finally that guy who's been holding their toe in the line, he's going to be all the way over here. And then we'll go in and, yeah, I think that, well, we'll do this guy first. He'll pile in and then he'll pile in. I don't think I'll, no, anyway, I'm just going to get four of them in with an extra spear. So spiders first, hitting on fours, but sixes do the mortal wounds. Well, there's a mortal wound, plus two hits, winning on threes because of the caverns of Falmanax being one wound. These guys just won't die. Four, Four. up save. Nope, they won't. So one of them dies so far, but I'm gonna get my five spears. Watch out. Fives and threes. Fives. Hey, look at that, two hits. Threes. Aha, nothing. I killed one. Now it's their turn. They could target. Yeah, we'll say either. He's close enough that we could say he's within an inch. I'm gonna swing into this squad. And he gets a choice. This squad. Him too. Threes and threes. No rerolls. Oh, they're slowing down. They're getting tired. Uh, that's just minus one. That's one damage. Just yeah. wounds one. So I'll just damage the guy way back here. And then it's their turn to go. So the ones that are backwards is part of this unit. Just shuffle the butt in there. Oh, wait. I couldn't do that. It was like this. So he had to go that way. Or I could just hold him still and let him go in. Yeah, that seems like a better idea. And then just kind of keep his butt there. Make sure you go within two inches. Move your butts. Move your butts. Move your butts. I'm going to do as much as I can against them and anything else that can't reach them. I think actually everything that can reach him can reach them too. So all five of these into him. We've got eight butt attacks. Hitting on fours. Sixes are mortal wounds. Okay, a mortal wound. Mm -hmm. Hmm. These dice are just not working for me. Let's see the spear. I get the spear, so I kill the last guy. We're looking at fives and fours. They don't have the Caverns of Falmanax thing. Okay, I could kill the last if you, if you fail a four up save. Ah. Woohoo! Oh. I killed them all! <laughs> Boy, those guys don't move! Holy cow! That's the end of combat, so I have a big bravery test we make, or battle shock test, so I'm gonna use my other command point to inspire and presence them, because I don't want to lose any more guys. But you don't get, well, you get that objective, so you get three points for that, bringing the score to eight to five. At the end of battle round three, Tress. Let's roll to see who gets to go first. I win ties, because I went first last time. Yeah, hey, I'm gonna go first. Darn. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Free move on a six? Yes, good. It just moves three inches. Ah! On a six plus, I get a free move there. No! I'm not going to use my command ability. It just doesn't seem like the time to use it yet. I need to hold on to Inspiring Presence. I'm going to do uh, Mystic Shield. I make it. Let's just pretend that you're in the range. If you roll it and make it, maybe I'll check it. Uh, you make it. I don't have to check it. You're good. I'm going to run the big boss. Six inches. So he's going to move 14. He's going to move right to here out of sight of the cannon, within three inches of those dwarves, or just outside of three inches. Basically what I'm trying to do is block, so it'll be harder for them to make a charge. They can't just go straight through, they have to like circumnavigate him. I'm gonna run my Arachnarok, three inches plus four. He's gonna limp, 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 to right here. And uh, yeah, these guys are actually just locked in combat. We have one here that's just within three inches, so they can't go anywhere. So we are just going to go straight to the combat phase because I don't have any shooting because my only shooting just ran. So I'll have this unit of 10 or whatever number there are, the butt ones. Which ones are the butt ones now? Because now their butts are facing the wrong way. So it's these guys, it's these five, six, seven, eight. So mm. I will go like this. Um, pile in, pile in. You know what, I'm gonna turn their butts this way. They're the butt attackers. That, that sounds bad. You know what I mean. 
Look at that nice arrangement. Ready? Aim! <laughs> Start with my butt attacks, hitting on fours. Sixes will do mortal wounds. Ha! What? Okay, I need new dice. This, that is, wow. That is just wow. One mortal wound and a wound. To which you get a four up save re-rolling. All right. Six spears hitting on fives. Now the spears naturally roll higher. And four is to wound. One wound. See, it's four up re-rolling. What do you get the re-roll from? Uh, it's just an ability that's called Ancestor Shield. Just a straight re-roll fail saves? Yep. Not ones or something like that? Nope, he re-rolls all failed wounds. And now he can hit back. Threes and threes. Threes. Oh, jeez. Threes? Threes. Oh, jeez. Mm. 3d3 damage. I don't get a save against that, so oh, two, five. So, one, two, three. Wait, no, I'm gonna keep him there. Two, three, four, five. Wait. Two, three, mm -hmm. four, five. That's better. And then this unit will go. I'm gonna use this to basically get further. You know what? He's gonna pile in like this. I wanna basically get further away from those guys over there as much as I can. Oh, these guys. Yeah, they'll pile in like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. Only two of them in. If I roll four sixes, you die. Ho! Oh, holy moly! You're down to one wound! All right, real quick. Okay! I got my two spears. Can they finish you off the spears? Fives to hit, threes to wound, because this is a cavern of Fulminac spears. Okay, I could kill you. Threes to wound. One wound. You get a four for roll, though, so you should be fine. Ah! 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 I killed him! I killed him! Oh, no. no more plus one to wound for you! Oh, no. How did I do that? Those dice went from cold to super hot. And just for the record, I used the same dice, so apparently I just ran out of bad rolls. So both those objectives are mine. So that's uh, it's turn four, so that's eight points, bringing me up to what? 14? 14 to your five? 16. Eight points? Eight plus eight? Eight plus eight is 16. Wow, 16 to five. Into your turn, so basically the game hinges on a simple fact. Do these guys make a charge into there? Not a very good clincher. But if they fail that charge, it's game over, right? Yep. Because if you make that charge, you should be able to get in maybe enough guys over there to, then, then we have to see what happens in the damage because you maybe won't do enough damage and I'll do tons of damage to you, who knows. But you gotta get enough guys there to get that objective from me. Not just contest it, but take it from me. In which case, you'll get four and four points and eight points. And then if you can keep it for the last turn, then I can only get five more points and you could get 10 and win the game. But it all hinges on whether they make their charge. So let's, let's go, let's go to your turn. You wanna pray? I do. Two plus. Two. That's fine. The uh, uh, warriors. Rend or six up, feel no pain? Rend. Six up, rend, okay. All right, move. Obviously you're not using your shield wall stuff. No. <laughs> it's dire times call for no shield walls. You still have shields, but you know, just don't shield wall. Whew, it's gonna be a 10 inch charge, but we still need to resolve the shooting phase because a lot of other things could happen. So let's just do a little bit more moving. Those guys will keep grumbling over there. Always. So five guys shooting into the big boss. And the... And the torpedo will go into him and try to finish off that last wound. Ten shots from the five guys hitting on threes, re-rolling ones. Well, that's a lot of ones, so thankfully you get to re-roll those. Okay, not bad. And then you're wounding on threes, right? Yep, rend one. Rend one. Threes, rend one. So I get a five up save. Uh, four of them get through. They're one damage apiece? Yes. So he has two wounds left. And the torpedo into the huge Arachnarok hitting on threes, re-rolling ones, wounding on threes, threes, and it's rend minus two? Yeah. So I get a six up. Ah, oh, I'm dead. Squeals and dies. Grots flying all over the place. Organ gun then into the big boss to try to finish him off. How many things are you gonna crank there, Kenny? Two. Two, so you need to roll two plus. Hey, you rolled a six, of course. So these hit on what? I have no idea what they it's do. It's 2d6 shots. 2d6 shots, seven shots. Seven shots hitting on threes. Rerolling ones. Oh wait, no, you don't get that. Nope. Guess so you don't have the grudge for your iron weld. And then they're winning on threes. Winning on threes. And these are minus one. Yes. So five up saves. I've only got two wounds left. So I am just barely dead. Well, he is out of your way. And then the cannon into them. What do you mean? What are you hitting on? Fours? Fours. No rerolls. No rerolls. <laughs> Other cannon? What's their target? We got two squads here. The butt boys. The butt boys over there, hit on fours. Wounding on twos for the one hit. 
Uh, you're ignoring my damage, so or right, or I save, so it's six, five damage. I'll keep that. But boys, so you did five damage. So yes. one, two, that's four, five. And now the roll that will determine the game: a ten-inch charge with a re-roll. Let's see it. No, that's a seven. I'll spend the Here, point. Roll, roll right there. Failed. <laughs> good game. That was a good game. Holy cow, you just walloped me horribly. But uh, the tricks of that double mortal wound thing definitely worked really well. It was amazing. Yeah, it hurt bad. But you're, boy, you are hardy. You are <laughs> durid and hardy. So I won still, thanks to the objectives. I think holding back for that first turn was the thing that won me the game. Otherwise, I would have been stuck up against you, and you would have just walled me with your shooting. You would have had way more attacks. I would have killed more of your guys, but you have a lot more guys to kill. So I think playing it safe is, is what won me the game in the end. And you fail in a couple long-distance charges that could have made all the difference in the world. Good game, though. Let's do our post-game stuff. All right. It's looking all green as destruction takes over the chains. I roll a three once again for my build points. I actually rolled a one, but I got to re-roll it because I won and I got a three. Give me four build points in total. There's no point actually putting a garrison here because the rivers block it from the Titan Works and Scoured Forest, and they've already got a garrison in the Caverns of Fulminax. So I just used three of the build points to buy a foundry, which is just an upgrade to one of my cards, which gives me more mustard and more build points. So I now control four. Now that got me my secret objective, which was control four territories, which gets me six bonus glory. With the glory from winning, that brings me up to 19. Kenny lost, but he still got some build points. What'd you decide to do with them? I just upgraded uh, one of my camps to uh, War Lodge, which gives me eight muster instead of three. So it basically allows you to bring more points, typically, if you draw that card. So that is the end of our game. Go and check out the fight at the eyes of the Prismaticon between Chaos and Death to see who takes over the awesome Super Death Star laser beams of the Prismaticon. Click the link below to go watch that right now. If you're not a Vault member, you can still click it, get a free seven day trial, watch it instantly, get access to all the other thousands of battle reports and all sorts of other stuff in the Mini Wargaming Vault and help support us so we can make more videos like this. Thanks for watching, happy Wargaming.